morning guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today jump doing something a little bit different. Join me out. It's about half past seven quarters to eight. But I've been here. Uh, got down here about half past six, set up. Um, it's still too dark, so I thought there's no point. So I've got myself set up. I'm just down on the river bureau, doing a little bit of piking, just a bit of dead baiting. And if I get time, I'll do a little bit of spinning later on. And uh, chuck a, but we're down on the bureau, we're just near the acle area, just on a little stafe. I'll show you around. We've got the marina here. Goes all the way along, and at the end, just about there. All around the corner is the main river. So I've got two rods out. The right hand one I've got just out in the middle. And I've got a big piece of sardine on there. And the left one I've just got down the edge at the minute. And we've got a sprat on that one. Just float fishing that one, just off the bottom. I've also brought with me <coughs> Me. Still feeling rough. Just got some ground bait. Just got some dead maggots in there, casters, hemp and tears, a little bit of sweet corn. I'm just basically. I had all day yesterday. Well, I'm feeling rough as hell uh, to prepare, but. I should have bought a little whip or something and just maybe sort of like try to catch a roach or a dace or anything. As I say, um, I only sort of remembered till this morning and I thought, ah, oh, it's all in the garage and shed and I could be asked to go and get it. So I've got, uh, got sardines, I've got some sprats, I've got some mackerel heads. Um, we'll give them a go. If we catch anything, we get a bite, we get a bite. If we don't, we don't. I'm not expecting to. I mean, all the way here from Norwich going uh, this this way on towards South House and uh, um, Ramworth and up towards Acol. The roads were just really bad this morning. I can't believe uh, I had to stick to the middle of the road and just all flooded out all the way through. And this as well, I was going to go on the other side, but that's just bog. Uh, it's all, you, you can see it. Well, I've, I've had a walk along but the ground is absolutely sodding all the way along it's probably been way over here there's so many boats in the marina um, it's been so high lately so much rain, so much flooded yesterday it basically rained and rained and rained all day yesterday never stopped not that we've uh, not had enough rain recently but um, the broad system is pretty well flooded out um, and something needs to be done because uh, it needs, you know, the water authorities need to get their act, act together and start scouring out and desilting it all and dredging it like they used to do, but it hasn't been done in 20 years. And now the rivers and the broads and all the rest of it are 
more than well less than half the depth you know, I used to fish the Wenton Free Riverside 20 years ago you know it's been 18 20 foot deep and all the way through Wenton Park and that um, brilliant for bream and now it's it's just choked with weed it's probably four or five foot and photosynthesis takes hold when it gets that shallow and silted up the weeds and lilies and all the rest of it start growing and then just choking up the river but, and people won't complain when it's flooding but you know people need to get onto the water authorities to start doing the job you know like and it used to do when it was nationally owned by British Water but now it's privately owned they can do what they want and send the money back abroad but that's another thing <coughs> so yeah I've got um pretty shady through the right hand rod I've just got a two and a half pound that's my pike rod uh, carp rod but it's two and a half pound but it's quite soft actually I've got an old Shakespeare Omni 7000 reel it's fantastic reel actually the clutch is absolutely bang on it's super smooth I, I stripped it all down um, and give it a really good service after I've got it I've got a uh, a little bit of a shock leader on there, and then that's 20 pound mono. As I say, it's down to sardine on that one. Just got two ounce lead. I popped a little bit of cork in the uh, sardine just to pop it up a little bit. And on the left hand rod, we've got Shakespeare. Ten foot spin, this is the better, or beetle, whatever you want to say in it, but that's uh, it's an ideal boat rod, but it's no good for spinning, um, way too stiff. But it makes brilliant uh, dead baiting rod. I've got Shakespeare Map 2 XT 5000 reel with a 40 pound braid on there. That's all the way down, and then I've just got the float on the sliding with a stop knot. I just need to put that stop knot down a little bit. A little sprat on there, uh, 40 pound trace, and I think it's size two Drennan triple hooks with the barbs crushed down. And that's basically it. Just um, got the lightest bobbins on, there's no weight on them, taking all the weight on. It's just literally a tiny bit of plastic, so that nice and light. <coughs> We've got the clutches set really loose, so there's no resistance. And I just bought a few uh, little box of mixed, probably won't be using them, they're all mainly floaters and shallow, shallow ones. A couple of diving ones there. A few plugs. I should probably be giving this one a go. Nice little rattle in it. These are diamond ones, this one's caught me quite a lot of pipe and nice perch before. Very good, well, this is probably, probably my oldest lure, I think. I don't know what it's called, it's a It's a deep diver. I'm not going to go too far. If, if I want to have a, I want to have a sort of cast about. I shall wind these in for a bit. 
and uh, then take a wander up the cut. But I've got some say ground bait, I'm just every sort of like 15 20 minutes just putting a little nugget <coughs> of ground bait in just hopefully attract them the uh, roach and dace and whatever into the area and hopefully that'll sort of like bring a pike in behind them. I'm gonna have a coffee because I've got the most awful tickly cough I had all night long, I had to get up and get some lem sips and honey and lemon and whatever. Just coughing, coughing, coughing all night long. And a bit of a woke up this morning, a bit of a on my left hand side, swollen tongue. To, well, I've just had a real bad phlegmy chesty cough for the last sort of like four or five days. But seems to be easing now. I loaded up with a load of lem sip capsules and powder and all the rest of it yesterday. But just want to get out, do something different. Hopefully get a bite, hopefully get a fish. But with the amount of water that's gone in, and salt water and all the rest of it. Might be a shot to nothing, but you can but try, can't you? You can just try, that's all you can do. Just try. If you're not if you're not out, you're not fishing, you're not gonna catch a fish, and that's all there is to it. So we're out, we're giving it a go, and we'll see what happens. Right, we're gonna grab a cup. We're gonna have a cast the float one a bit further out. It's got a fresh sardine. <coughs> Just put the first hook on the bottom up through his skull plate, and it's got a little uh, circle hook. Just going to put that through the back and turn it back on itself. Just through where the dorsal is, it's the toughest bit. Let's pull that wire. And again, just the tail one, just right through the hard bit of the tail. It. It's got a few beads there. I just put some uh, plasticine blue tack here just as a semi weight. I don't want it too heavy. Just enough to sink it. And I'm just going to get this cast out just near the other foot uh, to the far side. It's nine o'clock, quite quiet. I've had a couple of beats on the left one, it comes to nothing. So I just checked it, make sure it was all right. It doesn't look like it's touched. The right hand one I've just brought in, I've just cast that one down by the side of cobweb there the white boat I've just changed the bait on that put a mackle head it's like a mackle head and I left us about an inch of the body on it as well cut it off there's a nice big oily bait that's gone down there which I've just got a load in here a biome hole and then what I do is when I fill it um, I just so you leave about three quarters of an inch on the body bit of the head, cut them off, backpack them or just clean cut them and freeze them. I could use that whatever congas or if I'm going to the pier down the side of the pier wall or when I'm piking. I've got that, I've got some sardines, I've got some sprats. They've been in there. So I walk that one over, 
underarmed at him where the boat is. And I just walked it back <clears throat> on a loose. Well done, it's cut up a couple of bits of the uh, sardines, a couple of sprats into little chunks. And I'm just going to scatter them around where my bait is. Hopefully, get some interest into the swim. I've been still feeding the ground bait, but it's going to get some some bits of the fish, chopped up fish, in and around where my baits are, and hopefully attract a pike or two. Yeah, so just cast it out of the boat. Underarmed it, I walked over there where the railings are. <clears throat> just put it on a tight line and walked it back, so it's nice and tight. I've got just a little bit of play, so if anything touches it, I can straight into it. The rain started again, it's supposed to be pipe rods out. Just dead bait sardine on the right. Right into the middle. We've got a little sprat on the float, just ledges off the bottom. It's got a couple of little beeps on there. I'm keeping an eye on it. State, sat on the river bureau. It's about 12 degrees, nice and warm. Hope for a pike. Okay, it's about half past 10. I don't think much is going to happen. I pull the rods for sort of like 20 minutes, half an hour. And I've walked up and down with the lure rod spinning but no sign, but I'll probably give it another half an hour, 45 minutes. I keep putting ground bait in, changing the bait. But what I thought is, before the salt water and the tide, I can't see much topping or anything, so I put everything back in the car, get the law rod, get grab a few laws and backpack and just go all the way up to the river and up and around the river and see if we can get anything on the main river. Okay, it's a bit earlier than I thought, it's, caught, it's only quarter past ten. So what I've done is, the left one, I've shallowed it right up, so it's just tripping the bottom. Just cast that out and we're just letting that go around in the flow. And what I'm going to do with this one is, <coughs> I've just got a quick change clip, the sea fishing clip on there for the lead. I'm going to take that off, put a sardine on, I'm going to wobble that around in this bay. I'm going to have a take that off, put a sardine on, <coughs> and wobble it around in the bay. So it gives me about 45 minutes. I'll get to 11 o'clock, pack up, if I haven't had anything, put my backpack on, like I say, grab my law rod, and a few laws, and then we'll head up the river. I don't have a whole bunch up at the minute. I've not actually seen any fish topping or there's still a bit of clarity and up when I'm pulling the laws for it, I can still see the laws not three foot down. So there's still a bit of clarity in the water though I've just dropping out all the time. So I would imagine if you're gonna be on the feed, you're gonna be on the feed now. I mean they never stopped raining yesterday. The water has come down a bit. I was speaking to a couple of guys, it has dropped. chocolate colours running out so I want to say they'll definitely be thinking about getting on the feed now it's milded up as well so well, I'm going to pull this one in take the lead off put a sardine on and wobble it around okay just lashed a sardine on bound it a few times just because they're really soft so I'm just going to get this cast in
We'll set a couple of spins all the way down near the slip there. Literally first cast into the slip. I hooked into a decent fish but pulled out of it. We must have got snagged on the bottom of the wooden ramp. And I tried a couple of times but he's a bit wary now and he won't take it but he ripped that to bits. <coughs> oh. The one that got away again. Oh well, we'll keep trying. We're getting a fresh uh, 
sardine on and we'll give it 15 20 minutes or so let him calm down we'll have a go again in about another 20 25 minutes see if he's uh, interested Okay guys, what I've done is, I'm here, I'm behind you, look behind you, what I've done is, I've done what I said I was going to do, it's quarter past 11 now, I've packed up, dumped my stuff in the car, I've just got one rod, my landing net, unhooking mat, my backpack, if, uh, some sardines, I'm just going to go, up to the main river, try each little swim, have a few casts in each one, and uh, see if we can get anything. But I don't think staying mobile is going to work today. I think the pipe will be hauled up somewhere, wherever the roach are hauled up. So, but it's, it's mild, so I'm going to start. Where sort of like left off because I did have a few spins earlier on. Up as far as this here. And then we'll walk all the way up to the end where this uh, stath meets the main river bureau. <coughs> we'll turn left, we'll go all the way along where the boardings are. There are quite a few people fishing up there but I've always gone to sort of like no more than sort of four or five pegs in but apparently it does go all the way around so we'll see how far it goes today. Right, we'll start here. Let's get my rod set up and then I'll get back to you. Okay, we're ready to go. So a few casts here. I'm just gonna sort of like gently wobble this. Keep it near the bottom if I can and just twitch it along. Let it settle. If there's any pipe, they're gonna be sitting on the bottom. Sit down. I can see that going down probably about three foot or so. I'm just twitching it, letting it reset, twitch it. <coughs> Although I've done a lucky mistake putting this one on, it's upside down. Ideally, it wants to be head up. I wish this tickety cough would go. You're driving me crazy last night. I didn't have a sort of like a lot of tickety cough medicine in, so I had to get some honey. Take a couple of spoonfuls of honey, but it worked. So it's about quarter past 11 now. I'm gonna to spend too long, I think. If there's anything there, and it wants to have a go, it'll have a go. We're in the first couple of casts. Right down at the slip there. Literally plonked it in. Let it settle, as soon as I start twitching it. 
it latched on, but uh, I bought some lures as well, just in case we run out of uh, her in. They are soft, they don't last more than, that's why I just lashed it on ever so loosely with a bit of bait thread. That lasts a half a dozen casts if you're lucky. Well, one taken and it's just gone. Let's keep moving. See the marina there is absolutely full of boats under tarps. I've never seen it that full before. It's normally quite empty in there in the summer. But obviously with all this flooding, you can see where it's all come. It's gone over here and down the embankment there. But all the way here it's flooded. But I've noticed coming all the way along, all the pallets are bust. You've got this boat here, and there's a lot of damage to the sides of the boats. You've got the posts are ripped out, that one's snapped completely off. When it's that high, some of them have been lifted up, sitting on top of the posts. When the water's receding as well. All them boats down there, and if you notice, they're all up on her uh, oil drums, propped up on oil drums. So, I don't know if they've been there. Uh, when the water is at its highest above these, and uh, They've been impaled on them. I just washed my hands in the water earlier on, washed the ground bit off. It is freezing. The water's very cold. I'm not moving this too fast today, I don't think yeah, there's any pike, they'll be lying in wait in ambush. Anything sort of like comes in front of their nose, they might snaffle it, but they definitely won't be chasing stuff around like lunatics. So. <clears throat> It is hard work at the minute, pike fishing on the broads, really hard. I mean, if you've got a boat and you can sort of like get out, so these don't last long, you can get out into the uh, actual broads themselves. <coughs> you might be all right. I was thinking I might do that on the way home, going up to uh, Ramworth Broad. It's a little bit of a walk, five, ten minutes. There's a couple of nice, decent swims there you can get into. But any, any of the broads, I think, South Walsham. Decoy. That's where you want to be. The majority of the fish, <coughs> the roach, the bream, skimmers, 
especially when it's in flood with a lot of salt they'll go inside the broads or little tiny streams off them keep out of the way flow predators and all the rest of it <coughs> or try to There's always quite a few big pike come out of turf. Rockland Broad. <clears throat> There's only one, two swims you can get to in the summer, right at the very, very far end, where the uh, it meets the dike, which then goes on to the main river. But uh, I know there's big 20s and that come out of there in the winter, so I've seen the pictures. Uh, it's probably what last cast out of that fish. There's quite a few guys I know that have a little kayaks, pedal pedal board kayak things. And they go down to uh Surlingham Ferry, part there. Pedal downstream and then into the broad. Because there's no way you can see it all the way along. You walk for about half an hour, you can see the board, but it's just like this here. This uh, marsh reed. You think, ah, oh, I could just hop across there. No, you, you take one foot in it and then you're up to your waist. <laughs> well, you're up to your neck. Go to the next peg and refresh this. What I was just thinking is, I left all my stuff back at the car. Um, I'm on about 60% battery, so I'll work my way along. If we get any takes, any fish, uh, I'll get back to you. Um, if not, I'll, I'll save the battery for a sign off later. Or I'll we'll save it in case we get a fish. <coughs> but I'll keep working my way along to the main river. And then I'll show you the main river when we get up there. Okay, it's coming up to one o'clock guys. I ain't gonna give it much longer. I've been through uh, every law in the box, so I thought the last couple of casts, I'll go big and gary and try and shock them onto the uh, hook with this comrade in sort of like a banana custard or violent, but uh, it's a deep diver. I'm well, just finding out it's been a while since I used the bait cast. It's a bit of a dark art. And every single lure you put on, <clears throat> you've got to adjust the dropper weight, or what I call it, it's a, a dropper clutch. Loosen it off, just off over them. Um, adjust the, uh, your bearings, or your brake, brake clutch on the side. Fine with the bigger ones, so just got to notch it up a bit. If the lighter laws just come down to about two, but the bigger, deep, uh, the heavier ones just knock it up to three for me. And then it's just a case of adjusting the, the drop to when you release the clutch. I'll show you in a minute. <clears throat> You're not getting over rum. This is hugging the bottom, I can feel it rattling away. Sort of. See if I can show you. It's got a nice rattle in it. Let me see. I'll keep it on the top if I can. It's like a nice sideways wobble. But with the reel, when you release the clutch, that should just try and do it from here so you can have a look at the reel. Let's have a look. So if I lift this up, release the reel. That should stop pretty much. It's got a little bit of over on there but I normally break it anyway but it's just a case of adjusting it. So there's no over run. Let the brake do its business. Hey, 
joggers. <laughs> Two boats there. Quite a bummy to everybody do it. I'm going to give it a couple of casts in each swim, start making my way back. Been all along the river, I've tried every law in my box, I've spun and spun and spun until I've got myself dizzy. <laughs> Uh, coming back, I stopped and had a good chat with uh, four guys from the sufficient on the corner. They've not had anything. The two guys that were walking back as I was going up, they've not had anything. Well, one guy claimed to have had four roach, but the other guys were taking the piss out. <laughs> so they didn't really see him, but uh, apparently he put them back, but uh, his, his neck was dry. But uh, yeah, it, was, it just never stopped raining yesterday. The water's ice cold, it's dropped four or five degrees overnight. It's supposed to be dry today, but it's been right raining on and off all day long. But, we got out, we tried. Uh, just finding the right location and getting the conditions right. Uh, the conditions that weren't right today. And uh, like I say, talk to the guys. I know Roxham's fishing well for pike, but I don't really like to go there. But you were saying last week, he went down a week or two ago and there was he counted 18 people pike fishing along there where under the iron bridge where the cut is as it goes into the broad and all the way down to the corner he said it was lined with people and you now that's just too pressured I feel sorry for the pike I mean they get caught time and time again but he reckoned there was about eight over the double figures but we might give that a go in the next next week or so if you know if it, the pressure is released on it a little bit more but uh we, we got out uh that's all i can do so whether i put this video up or not uh, there's no content in there or there's no fish in there but um i know that's what you like to see but pike fishing on the broads these days is uh it's no mean feat i tell you if you, if you to get you know it's uh, it's it's hard going um you need a little boat a little kayak or paddle board or something to get in and around the broads um, horning is pretty good and box is pretty good as I say but anyway I'm going to sign off now I'm going to get back and I'll see you again in a new video all the best guys, cheerio